Hello, everybody. Shalom. You, you guys have been very, you've been very busy uh, preaching the gospel. I've seen the pictures. It's wonderful. I share it with everybody. Yes, yeah, wonderful work that you're doing. God is blessing. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, today I want to talk to you about the priesthood. So, so we've been studying in our Torah portions about the temple and about the priesthood, and I want to talk to you about how that relates to us today. Yeah, I can see everybody. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, see, I see everybody's wonderful face. <laughs> so, we talked before that we're God's representatives, right? We represent God to the people, okay? And our lives are supposed to be separate from the world, but yet we still live in the world. And so that's the challenge for us as ministers, as men and women of God, to be separate but within. So we have to be distinct and set apart in our conduct and in the way that we represent God, the way that we represent him to others. That's what it means to be a priest to the Lord. Now, in Ex Exodus chapter 28, it talks about the menorah and the light, right? And in, in the tabernacle or in the wilderness. And it's interesting that the very first responsibility given to the priests in the tabernacle were to maintain the menorah, to maintain the light. Okay. 
ఒక యాజకునిగా యాజకులను కొనవలసినటువంటి మంచి బాధ్యతలు ఆ యొక్క ప్రత్యక్ష గురాలం దగ్గర దేవుడు అన్ని విషయాలు కూడా తెలియజేస్తారు Now see, the menorah represented God's light and His holiness to the world, and the priests are, were to maintain that. And so for us today, we are to represent God's light and His holiness to the world around us. That's how we maintain it, because we don't have a tabernacle anymore. We are the tabernacle. Yes. So this light we're to tend to the divine presence within God's spirit within us and we allow that light to radiate out through us into the world which he sent us to we let god's light come out of us to the people so we have to remember Isaiah Isaiah tells us that we are uh, to be a light to the nations. Right? We don't hide our light. We we let it shine. We are a light to the nations. So as priests and ministers of God and you're a light to the nations you're to shine so people who are trapped in darkness can see the light and come to the father that is our role Amen. So we help direct and draw people to the reality of the Father. And we can do that even though that sometimes we're broken, sometimes we're frail. But God strengthens us for that work. And we need to embrace his strength. When the Father man shakti for bottom, balayil mantra alan yeah. Now, the priests in the in the tabernacle time they wore special clothing. Okay. Now we don't we don't dress like they do, but their clothing tells us something about the role that they played and the functions that they did. <laughs> So the priests, the, their garments were to remind them who they served, right? And how they were to serve. They were to serve the Lord, but they also served the people. And how they were to serve in the manner that they were to serve, right? In righteousness and in holiness are how they to address the people. In Exodus 28, 36, let's look at that passage. Exodus 28, 36. <laughs> Mm. 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 Mm.
So it says, you are to make an ornament of pure gold and engrave on it a seal. And then the seal, it says, set apart for the Lord. Okay? And then just a few more verses down, it talks about the clothing that they wore. And it said they are to be clothed in dignity and splendor or glory and honor. Okay? This is how we carry ourselves. Because we represent the Father. We represent His glory. And we need to act honorably, not dishonorably. So I'm going to tell you some, some names of the clothing that they wore. The first one was called an ephod. And that was an apron that they wore. Um, it's an e ephod, ephod. It's a, it's the apron that they wore, the clothing that they wore. And now that was woven with the colors of royalty and it also had gold thread woven in it to represent the purity, right? The purity of the Lord that they would represent to the people. So like the priests, we have to clothe ourselves with pure thinking and a pure heart, right? Because we represent the Father. Now, a next piece of clothing that they would wear is called the Hosen. The Hosen. And it's a breastplate that it's a, a plate that they would wear over their chest. And this plate contained stones, beautiful stones that had the name of the tribes engraved on each stone. So he would carry the people on his chest. So he always carried the people close to his heart. And we have to do the same. We keep the people close to our heart. We love them like the Lord loves them as best as we can. Now, another piece of clothing they would wear is called the Mi Il, Mi Il, and it was a robe of blue wool, and blue was a color of royalty. Yeah, 
ఉండతనానికి కాదు చిన్న సంపద ఉండతనముగా ఉండటానికి అది ఉపయోగపడుతుంది And then the last piece that the high priest would wear is called the Zitz Zahav and it was a hat, a, 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 a turban, a pointed turban and on that turban that's where they would have that golden headband that says holy to the Lord. <laughs> Now see, this is the crown that we, we wear as ministers, that we are holy unto the Lord. We don't live for ourselves, we live for the Father. We live for His, His will, not our own will. Now I want to talk about the breastplate again, that the plate with the stones, it had each stone was engraved with the name of the of a tribe of the 12 tribes. But it had two more stones, and these stones were very special. Now these, these two stones were called the Urim and the Thummim. Urim and Thummim the lights and the perfections and these were used to discern the will of God Now, many scholars don't exactly know how these stones worked. Some say that light would shine out of the stones. Some say that they would cast the stones on the ground. Some say that they weren't stones at all, but rather scrolls. We don't really know for sure. But it was a tool that they used to discern the will of God. <laughs> So it's the job of the priest to discern, to understand and know the will of God. Now we don't have special stones, we don't have scrolls or things like that. But what we do have is the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, that is how we discern the will of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we have to trust by faith. We trust in his word and then we we seek to hear the Holy Spirit, right? We hear him in our inner man and we trust and follow because that's how we know the will of the Lord. And when we know the will of the Lord, we can do what he has called us to do and go where he calls us to go. So 
See, the priests, they used to have to trust in these stones, these Urim and Thummim, the light and the perfections. But because we have Yeshua, we can trust in His light and His perfection to operate in our lives and discern His will. So, in Exodus chapter 29, we see some other things with the priests. And the priests are consecrated, right? They're set apart from all the other peoples for a special role, a special duty. Now, now in Exodus 29 we see Moses begins to consecrate Aaron and his sons he consecrates the high priest so he takes the blood of the sacrifice okay and he puts it on their ear he puts it on their thumb and he puts it on their toes why does he do this we have to remember we have to guard what we hear what we fill our mind with what we let come in our mind and we think about that needs to be consecrated by the blood and then the thumb go, go ahead now they put it on the thumb because the thumb is our hand our hand represents our works right what we do for the Lord it has to be consecrated who are we working for? Who are we serving for? Are we serving for ourselves so we can have people recognize us? Or are we serving for the Father and so He can recognize us? What is our motivation? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then he would put it, the blood of the sacrifice, on their toe, on their big toe. That represents their walk, how they live, how they conduct themselves, okay? Their lifestyle. Are you walking in sin or are you walking in righteousness? Are you walking in the direction that the Lord wants you to go or are you walking in your own direction? It needs to be set apart and consecrated. Even 
So we're not, we don't consecrate ourselves with the blood of animals, but we have the blood of Yeshua. He, he died on our behalf, so it's his blood that consecrates us. So we need to apply his blood to our ears, guard what we hear, to our hands, guard our work, and to our feet to guard our walk. You have to remember, you are living temples. And as a living temple, you house the Spirit of God. You house His Holy Spirit. And that that's His Spirit radiates from you for the people. We don't want to defile our temple by walking or doing or hearing things that are not befitting of a priest, right? Not befitting of a servant of the Lord. You know, when we walk inside a church building, we know what that building is for. When we go to, if we go to a temple, to another God, we would know what that was for. So when people come to us, they should know who we serve. They should know who we are priests for. We represent the living God. And we do that by walking righteously, walking in His ways before Him and not our own. There's another scripture I want to look at, and it's first Peter, first Peter, chapter two, verse nine. So it says, you are a chosen people, the king's priests, a holy nation, a people for God to possess. We are to be a, we are to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, a holy people for the service to the Lord. That is who we are. That is what we've We've answered God's call. He has called each and every one of you to do this. And you have said, yes, Lord. It's a high calling. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
So how we represent, how we present ourselves to the world matters because we represent the Father. Okay? And it reveals if we're part of the culture, if we're part of the world, or if we're just in the world. See, God's priests, they weren't part of the world, they, but they were in the world. Okay? They were still separate. They were consecrated. They were set apart, holy, royal, a people for God's possession. Amen. Amen. So scripture tells us that we are kings and we are priests. Now, what is a king? A king doesn't go where everybody else goes, right? He doesn't go to the low places. He only goes to the high places. The priest doesn't go where everybody else goes, right? Kings and priests don't act like common people. You are an uncommon people. You are separate and consecrated, just like the kings and the priests. They have roles and functions to do, and it's a high calling. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you all today, as you go and do the work of the ministry, you are God's representatives. It's evident in your conduct. I, you know, my brother Abathu has shown me everything, all the work that you are doing. And it's clear you're doing the work of a priest. And it pleases the Father's heart. You all are going to the nations to bring people with the light that's in you to show them the Father, to introduce them to the Father and show them, to disciple them how to follow. But I want to give you a warning. We represent the Father, but if we misrepresent the Father, then everything we say, everything we do, will be a curse to the people and not a blessing. We need to live like kings and priests, live up to the high calling that we have, so everything we do will be a blessing to the people and be a blessing to the Father. <laughs> Yeah, 
ఆ లేవేలు కలిగినటువంటి ఆ ఉన్నతమైనటువంటి పిలుపు మనకి ఇచ్చారు కాబట్టి మనం కూడా అదే ఉన్నతమైనటువంటి రీతిలో ఉండాలని బాబు పేరు అందరికి కూడా వాళ్ళు So we we are in very strange times my brothers very difficult times in the world it is time that god's people it's time that god's people be strong we need your work we need the priests to stand up to represent god in a dark and fallen world So I say to you be strong my brothers continue the work that you're doing for it is very pleasing to the father and it is encouraging to us here as well Mangi kadava tenalo devuni parku marinta palamuga panchevalsina varavanna adu ento mari aayanu santosha parchavalsina konni varavanna inka marinta palamuga ayi pani kadava tenalo cheyagalsina santoshanga undali Amen. Man, it's good to see you all again. <laughs> amen, amen. Blessings to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, my dear brother. Thank you for your good time, good time for me. You're very good. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. receive it yes <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much yes thank you thank you we will see you all another time to all convey my regards to all uh, my little little baby little child uh, oh. children yep at at his his name is atsalaya atsalaya he's he's growing he's getting very big 
It's okay, okay, okay. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Convey, convey our all record. Get, get, ah, ah. Convey our record. Convey our records to the little child and all of your children and uh, my sister also. Yes, we receive it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We will pray for your family. Yes. We will all pray for your family. And we, we will pray for India. We always pray for India. Yeah. Kindly, kindly remember, remember each pastor, each pastor uh, coming from the long distance of places to listen your uh, blessed messages, mm. to carry, to carry to many villages, and to be, uh, to be a strong uh, worker, to do the uh, strong ministry surrounding villages. They are not, they are not coming this side or this side or this side. But uh, they are coming uh, much of long distance because um, there is no any kind of transportation always in the cities. There are much, much, uh, much kinds of uh, uh, availabilities are there. But uh, in our villages, uh, nothing any uh, availabilities. So uh, sometimes one bus is there, sometimes no facilities. Uh, some passes by walk, some passes by uh, cycle, some passes by uh, bus different different ways they came to this place yeah if they started early in the morning so they could they, could, they can be reached till this till this time so that uh, kindly pray for them for the transport and uh, uh, and also uh, every month we are feeding we are feeding to the my to the pastors so kindly remember them and pray for them you and my sister and my sister which is your wife Yes. My sister is your wife. Yes. So you can you can uh, you can share with my sister about the pastors and mm -hmm. their uh, feeding and their transportation uh, because they are doing hard work in the villages for Yahweh. So that kindly pray for all of us this ministry to be grow up in the days to come through your family. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. I receive it. Thank, Thank you. We we will we will pray for you. God will honor your hard work. God will honor your hard work. Thank you. Thank you yep. so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye everybody. <laughs> bye. Shalom. 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 <laughs> Shalom. See you next time. I love you. Bye.